Hey family, thank you for following and trusting the path that led you here. This is Flow Space, Conscious Conversations with J&D. I'm Jerrica. And I'm Deandra. Our discussions will be led by intuition and spirit as we continue to evolve and learn about what it means to live an earthly human experience. We finally are here. <sighs> I know. This is why we couldn't record before. It was like it wasn't complete. That's crazy. Yeah. We're here now. It really does feel like a deep sigh. Like It does. <sighs> like a deep sigh of relief. It feels like how would we rush into recording something no. after all of this? <laughs> In this episode, we discuss the different lessons we learned on pursuit of creating our set. This taught us not to rush. And I really feel a great lesson that was learned through this process was that when challenges arise, it's an opportunity for us to look at the situation differently, not to prolong the steps that aren't being useful, you know, like it all fell down then we just read it at the same way <laughs> yeah that was like major yeah when the want or the desire is greater and it takes the moment what's being shown to us we take that for granted and it's like oh these frustrating things that we keep trying to push through and it's like yo you're insane like yeah take a chill pill i don't know what changed today oh like what God. allowed us to like actually take the steps maybe we were tired of our own shit you know, like you have to get fed up with your own old patterns that aren't helping you, I think. But like we can prevent the prolonged use of these outdated patterns by choosing a different true. way. I just really want to receive the medicine of this old project so that we can move forward with this wisdom. Yeah. Because holy moly. I think it's like seeing when you need to take the step back when your desires can't make you do illogical things just because you think you have the answer or the solution it's the desire for real but like what was the desire sis the desire was to like get it going yeah but on the corner why no, that I don't know. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, we just, I think we just started putting it up. We didn't even, like, <laughs> do you remember? We didn't talk about it much. No. We just started putting it <laughs> And I think that's the desire you're talking about, like, the desire to just have it up and going. Yeah. There was no, like, thought process in it how. It was like, okay, put this here, put this here, put this here. <laughs> yeah. That's so funny. Like, I think it was by chance. I don't know if you did it on purpose or if it was just by chance that Eni was the middle tapestry. Because I remember just picking up a tapestry and I was like, I'm going to just put it up. <laughs> yeah, <I know. laughs> yeah, but I did tell you, remember, I was like, there's two mandalas. Yeah. But yeah, that's exactly what it was. It was just like, okay, let's start doing. Yeah. Just like why our beanbags aren't the right shapes. <laughs> <laughs> it was like let's open them so that goes back to the desire overpowering like what's the best foot forward I think so okay it's yeah. the balance between like the logical and like the desires the dreams the vision I was speaking about this actually recently where it's like the momentary pleasure can't outweigh your consciousness and you can apply that to this situation because it's like the momentary gratification of like seeing progress being made even though it's not progress that's sustainable can override our consciousness where it's like wait a second because there were many times that we we're like something's not right something's not right something's not right but we kept going because it was like oh we're well, doing it finally like it looks so good so that's part of the same theme yeah that's really grand i have to sit with that the moment can't override the consciousness. I forgot how you said it, but the it momentary was. pleasures. Yeah. 
And like an example, not with this, would be in the moment wanting to eat bad or drink alcohol or do drugs. It'll give you a nice high. It'll make you feel euphoric and good. But then your conscious knows that that's destructive to your wellness. Yeah. So it's like which one wants to show up and is stronger? Like which one can you go with more? Right. And what's the result of being in alignment with what we truly know is best? Like ease. Yeah. Flow. Mm -hmm. Less struggle. (laughs) It's so insane to me this realization is still unraveling because readjusting everything right now had we done this from the beginning like a month and a half ago or however long it was yeah you know how much time could have been saved Mm -hmm. resources energy you know our creativity could have been used otherwise to help with the dream to manifest it you know instead of like it got to a point where we didn't even have any ideas because we were like burnt out creatively yeah like we used up our whole bank because we were forcing something yeah that was continuously showing us that we had to readjust (laughs) (laughs) but we were like no we're not readjusting (laughs) let's go it's so crazy the journey of you know learning how to flow It's so weird because throughout it, I feel we did our best to try and see how we were being in our own ways, but how come we couldn't see it? I think because of the attachment to the desired outcome. Mm. And how can we recognize when that surfaces and gets in our own way? I think being really clear and honest with the self and then recognizing when you're not still inside. So like for us, that over excitement or like over frustration, any Mm. time the internal pendulum swings to one side of the extremes, I think is a really good time to say like, okay, what's not right right now? Because we're swaying back and forth. Okay. Because I feel like there were moments where, like, self-reflection occurred to the point where it's like, okay, we had no idea what was going to be the future of the podcast. You know, like, that idea was entertained, Mm -hmm. not in, like, as a whole, but just how we present, like, do we just not progress and grow in how we show up? Yeah, but is that, do you feel that that's in honesty and in truth? No, because look at us now. (laughs) So it's like, in those moments... I don't want to say victim mindset, but like defeat could come forward and then it's like, no, we're not going to be defeated. We're going to keep on with um, like our persistence or perseverance was a word we kept using a lot. But it's like, why does something require that level of perseverance when it's something so simple? Like we weren't trying to climb Mount Everest. We were literally trying to hang up tapestry yeah. and do things so simple. <laughs> <laughs> So, like, why is that requiring that level of work? Right Right. there is an immediate, like, what's going on. Yeah. But because we're so clouded by that desire and, like, the excitement, we're not able to see that. It's fascinating, really. Yeah, and it's fine because now, look, we're having this conversation about it. So now we have that awareness. And I'm sure it will be put to the test, like, after this. Of course. And it's always fine. That's the thing. Yeah. If you allow it to be. Right. Instead of (laughs) resorting to feeling defeated and then that evolving into being in a victim mindset, which Mm -hmm. takes out the creativity and the inspiration that allows forward movement and momentum. Mm -hmm. And I think what helped us arrive here as well was our openness, despite like the moments of feeling defeated or being down we still had some inclination within us that allowed for us to think outside the box or welcome in something new despite like how we may feel momentarily yeah and i think that's the persistence but that's a persistence from like a soul level yeah in terms of wanting to continue with this mission we feel strongly and passionately about (laughs) yeah so it's like even though (laughs) the physical world was frustrating and we felt defeated at certain times and we couldn't come up with a logical answer because of our own desire blocking it we still had that 
edge to like keep going like keep on keep on keep on yeah and talking about it helps distinguish that difference of when there's a soul rooted intention in whatever it is that we're pursuing and how like the human and the ego and our own desires that come with that surface Mm -hmm. to help us clear that to continue forward with the soul intention yeah and actually like you can even apply the ego concept to like the cycles we kept experiencing down here where it's like the (laughs) ego could be the one with the desire getting in the way Mm -hmm. and that's why we were continuously faced with challenges with something that was so simple but our ego was getting in its own way yeah yeah with like good intentions and in this in the sense that like we were just really excited and wanted it to happen Mm -hmm. it wasn't with like being prideful in the ways that like demonizing something but yeah. almost in a sense in a way you know because it's like why isn't this working out Meh. yeah and it's not even yeah like it's i'm not saying we we were being like egotistical or prideful yeah. it was just the way that it's like perfection you know mm-hmm. and perfection can be a trait of the ego and things like that yeah i elaborated just to like bring further context to like what this journey has been to arrive here yeah because you know (laughs) the ego journey has been evolving in our life so like how we relate to it and what it means to us is different yeah than it once was or how it could be for another you know Mm -hmm. or in a moment unlike this one I don't know (laughs) I was really tight (laughs) I think that was a tipping point like the being activated to be so annoyed from one minute to the next Mm -hmm. like I don't know how long ago what that was, like 10, 15, 20 minutes ago. Yeah. After going over that bridge within myself, I recognized how that was like a tipping point. I was like, okay, something is about, well, I'm on the precipice of something great, you know, because it was such a like slingshot, like pulling all the way back to an emotion that I rarely feel so yeah. strongly. <laughs> so then being launched forward and here we are, you know, yeah. which I'm choosing to perceive that experience like that like, yeah which is a good thing yeah <laughs> because from the flip side like me not knowing what was going on internally with you i'm like oh man like maybe we need a pause like something is <laughs> off you know like <laughs> i didn't even think of it like oh we're right there on the brink of something because of how like frustrated you appeared it was yeah. like dang we're like continuing to push this crazy idea forward but we need to like chill again yeah and like how do you distinguish the difference between that with like needing a break and like just breathing through or like riding it out or something i don't know you know what i'm saying yeah i guess every moment is different and like in an interaction with another individual it can be helpful when like balance is brought forward because i even think i said it like oh maybe we should stop before like we mess more things up yeah and you were like i'm working through it and i was (laughs) like okay (laughs) Once it surfaced, I was working through it. Yeah. I was like, this is crazy, you know, because I, I can't count on my on one hand how many times I have felt <laughs> so annoyed so quickly for, like, one minute to the next. And I knew it, actually, like, reflecting back when you were like, <laughs> come on, sis. Yeah. I was like, <laughs> what? I'm still, like, <laughs> laughing. Yeah. <laughs> Once I said that, I was like, damn, I, I went I went down the hole. But I didn't because I was in a different energy, yeah. so I didn't catch it. Yeah. I'm glad, honestly, because you didn't deserve that. And, like, once I said that, that's when I really knew. But that's that was the moment where, like, the switch went off. Okay. And I was like, damn, I'm annoyed. And I recognized how annoyed I was and how out of character I was because I projected it onto you. And I was like, damn, like, my sis didn't deserve that. And then that's what helped me go on the journey of, like, okay, I need to just get over it. Yeah. It brought the awareness forward. It's so funny. Because I was so clueless to it. <laughs> I didn't know, I, like, that was going to be the thing, you know? The light fell. I'm like, oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> it's so funny. Oh, my God. Yeah, here we are on the other side of that. Yeah, and it happened really quickly, too. Mm-hmm right after that was like what you said we were like okay we don't need this we don't need this yeah it like cleared away the unnecessary things we were still trying to push Mm -hmm. and then that's where i reflected where i feel like that annoyance stepped forward to 
show what was being done unnecessarily like it was different from like a surface annoyance it was like very deep i was like wait something is not in alignment that's making me feel this way even though i couldn't so cool yeah it's really cool how like the signs are there for us if we choose to receive them and then what unfolds after that is all up to us whether we receive the signs and we go with that flow or if we put up resistance and we try to do whatever it is that we are thinking we know best about yeah it's so fascinating because it feels very powerful like it's like a, a superpower to be able to like utilize our emotions to our benefits as like a compass yeah you know because i didn't feel in that moment like so annoyed where i wanted to stop it was just i had no thoughts associated like no narrative associated with the with the sentiment mm-hmm. so that's why i knew i was like okay i just gotta like move through it like it's not something to like stop me in my tracks you didn't attach to that annoyance yeah like you were aware of it but you kept going yeah which i think is important Mm -hmm. like when navigating the different emotions because I think that's what answers the question you just asked like how do you know when it's time to pause or time to keep going yeah and I think it's that like the attachment you feel to whatever surfacing agreed yeah because like the stronger the attachment I feel like the more attention it deserves to be able to like navigate it and like let it go eventually exactly like if you have a deep deep annoyance or frustration whatever it is sadness like that emotion deserves your attention and maybe that's when you're like okay let me pause let me sit with this and then I could return with clarity yeah especially if there's like a thought line alongside it but there wasn't (laughs) I was like okay (laughs) (laughs) I'm really annoyed right now but I'm gonna get over it and here we are (laughs) finally arrived oh my god it feels so good it does like I want to bask in it you know like I want to meditate and take it in the Mm -hmm. energy of this newness like it feels like a cycle of completion yeah you know I haven't felt this still regarding what we've been trying to do with flow space the podcast in a while so it feels really good to recognize the difference yeah like every time we would come down to like fix things for our set we would leave feeling like excited but it still didn't feel solid and it didn't feel like final yeah but now i feel like yeah i don't have anything to even like think about or worry about or try to adjust yes i feel centered Mm -hmm. and still whereas like before i would feel excited like oh we're making progress but it didn't feel grounded and rooted yeah and filled with clarity it was just like all right we're just on our way you know it's still we're working on it we were in the pro like progression or we were in the stages of those the progress being made but it wasn't close to completion right now it's like it's completed here you are yeah a cycle of completion like being a student of life and the lessons that present for our own good yeah and the good of humanity at large through this inner work that Mm -hmm. we're able to then carry forward into the outer world yeah really choosing the path of most allowance every single time and it's such a teaching (laughs) to get out of our own heads and out of our own ways yeah that's really good makes me want to go listen back to that episode Mm -hmm. because i remember it being so pivotal yeah which further reminds me how just because like things come into awareness doesn't mean that they're like deeply integrated and embodied in our way of being no (laughs) everything is always like returning back to remembrance because even simplification you know when that came forward for us like that teaching of how great simplifying is in terms of like getting out of our own way Mm -hmm. is something else because like how can we simplify this but it just like wasn't it's the different layers to the teachings because it's like yeah we know like we can go simple yeah. but it's like how simple can you really make it and like recognizing where you're not making it simple even in your efforts to simplify because <laughs> this journey with the podcast visuals and the set we were trying to be as simple as possible but in that we overcomplicated so much on pursuit of simplification and we didn't even recognize it i can recognize it now because we're out of it but while in it we thought we were doing it yeah 
Yeah. It makes me reflect back to like earlier stages of bringing the studio to life, like the lights, the different purchases that we did, the returns that we did. Yeah. Like, could that have been simplified or is was that just necessary? I mean, it's all subjective because yeah. if we were where, <laughs> like, you're always where you need to be in the moment. So everything is surfacing for a reason. Because had we had this insight, then obviously things would have gone differently. But we didn't because we needed to go through it. So here we are with this insight now. And it just can be further integrated and practiced more and more. Yeah. Yeah. I feel more whole. Like, I felt like, reflecting back, I I can feel how I felt fragmented before. Mm -hmm. Like, pieces of myself are missing to feel, like, centered and complete. And now I feel like I've returned. And I would like to carry this forward even in future moments of uncertainty to then bring forward wholeness into whatever it is I'm working on externally. Yeah. The question that I keep hearing in my mind is if you knew then what you know now, what choice would you make? And that's something I feel like moving forward in different decision makings and situations, it's a question that can be asked so that you can have a wider perspective of the insights you do have and see how that can aid you in whatever's being done. Because it's so easy to look at things in hindsight, but how about like we try to practice it in the moment so that we don't have to have that hindsight vision. Mm. That's really wonderful. I love that. May we welcome in that reflection in all moments. Close faces back, baby. <laughs> Conscious Conversations 2024 with J and D. Welcome to season 11. Oh. <laughs> we did it, sis. I was just going to say that. Oh. <laughs> Cheers. <laughs> with the plot <laughs> that's what did it for me I know <laughs> listen oh my god we're here yeah oh it's so nice I know thank you for listening continue flowing in your own space by simply being if this resonated with you and you feel called please be sure to follow us like and share until next time, wherever you go, give yourself space, space to, to flow. flow. <laughs> hey, Peace out, family. family. <laughs> <laughs>If you would like to support us, you can check out our affiliates mentioned in our show notes or on our website at flowspacewellness.com and go to our affiliates page. We have affiliates with Greenfield Water Solution, which brings life back into your water, with Lil's Basement, which are handcrafted polymer clay jewelry incense holders and cute creations for your body and home, Baja Gold Salt Company, which we love to cook with their sea salt. Oko Living, which are 100% organic cotton, herbal dyed, ethically sourced and made, beautiful yoga mats. Life-changing energy, which supplies sound healing instruments such as crystal singing bowls, singing pyramids, and tuning forks. You can also support us by leaving us a love donation, any comments on our social media pages or our YouTube and also sharing our podcast with your friends, family, co-workers, and anybody you feel would benefit from our message. Thank you so much for joining, tuning in, and listening to us, and sharing this space, and we look forward to connecting with you in the future.